everyone. I am finally um, getting around to posting another video. I just, I swear, life seems so crazy sometimes. I didn't mean for it to be this long in between videos. I actually did this painting and the video of it about, I don't know, over a week ago, probably closer to two weeks ago, and uh, just, I have not had time to get back to it and do a voiceover for it. So, uh, this is what you'll be seeing today, and I'll be watching the video kind of along with you as I do the voiceover so I can remember what I was doing. I used, well, I set out six different colors of ink for this one, but I think I actually ended up only using five. I don't think I used the sixth one. Um, I will show you those in just a minute. Very quickly, I wanted to show you this. I do not have a video of this, but the reason I wanted to show it to you is I was just playing around a few days ago, or well, right before Christmas, I guess, uh, with the gold foil. And that's what I used on this for the metallic instead of, I do have a little bit of metallic mixed in with this one, but I really blended that metallic in quite a bit. I don't think you can see it uh, in the video. You can just kind of see the shimmer of the different color metallic mixed with the ink in there in this one. But what I did was and when it was still tacky, when I finished the painting, I just put some gold foil on top of it and patted it down good and then just kind of wiped off the excess. And this is what was left. Now, if you all like that, if you want me to, I'll be happy to do a video with that. I was just had it sitting out because my granddaughters and I were doing some Christmas wall art and as you heard in one of my other videos, we had gold foil and stuff all over the place and glitter. So uh, while it was out, I just decided to see what would happen if I did that. Cause I had used some iridescent glitter on another painting that I had done for one of my granddaughters. So thought I would see what would happen if I used the gold foil on this one. So just let me know if you would like to see a video where I'm using gold foil instead of uh, the metallic ink and I'll be happy to do one like that. Just leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, before I get started here, I uh, wanted to tell you all to check out Katherine Babcock of Artistic Insanity, her channel. I wanted to show you these. My granddaughters, oop, if I can get them out here without breaking them. My granddaughters watched uh, a couple of her videos and she had painted these the uh, clear Christmas ornaments with alcohol ink. And so they were just dying to try that. I had picked up some ornaments on clearance the day after Christmas that I, because I wanted to do it, I have never tried it before either, but they got to it before I did, so I may be lucky to get to do it. Uh, anyway, they are beautiful, and she did, She does an amazing job of explaining what you need to do. The girls are 9 and 10. You know, they had no trouble doing this, so if you haven't tried this before, don't be worried that, you know, you're not going to be able to do it. I, this one you can... You can see through pretty good. I was gonna see if shining the light through. But uh, Maddie, the younger one, she did this one. She used lighter colors. Zoe, the 10 year old, she made this one. And um, it's very dark, and but it's beautiful when the light shines through it. Let me see if I can come around here where I can see the, the picture in the in here and see if I can show you all. Oops, maybe not. I swapped one of the girls' little flashlights that they like to play with. Um, so you can kind of 
See here, this flashlight, the batteries are about to go dead in it, I think. But she did it in like indigo and stream, I think. Um, but it's, it's just gorgeous. I wish I could get it to show the colors better for you. But it's just beautiful anyway, the light. I think I'm going to not save these till Christmas. I'm going to hang them up in a window somewhere so that the light can shine through them. So anyway, uh, Catherine Babcock, Artistic Insanity. She does a fantastic job of explaining if you would like to try that. And uh, definitely check out her channel. It's uh, I'll put a link down below in the description box to her channel. But it's Catherine with a K, Babcock, dash Artistic Insanity. Uh, here on YouTube, so you all can check that out. Um, all right, let's see. We have got, all right, for this, I actually had to go back and watch my own video because I couldn't remember what colors I had used. So, dun, 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 let me get out all my bottles. Uh, Wild Plum, all of these are Ranger inks, by the way, except for my metallic. I uh, did Wild Plum, Purple Twilight, I'm just going to set those down there, uh, Indigo, Eggplant, Stream, and Patina. Now, I honestly do not remember which colors I used at this point. I don't think I used... No, I did use patina. I know I used both of those. I know I used that one. And maybe it's the eggplant. I'm not sure if I used the eggplant on this one. But anyway, um, that's the colors that I had laid out. And I, I used most of them, if not all. I'm really sorry, y'all. I should not wait. <laughs> should not wait this long before I do a voiceover because I just, I can't remember. You have too many other things going on in my poor little weenie brain here. I um, also used the Pinata by Jacquard Brass, my favorite go-to metallic, and the little needle nose bottle, which there's a link down in the description box to these little needle nose bottles on Amazon. I used 91% alcohol. I'm finally on my last bottle of the 91%, so I can switch over to the 99 and hopefully not get so many little water spots on some of these things that I do. Um, if you order these, make sure you get one of the sets that has a little teeny tiny funnel, unless you have a funnel yourself already. Let me, let me move this, be my luck, I'll get, so I haven't sealed this one yet. And be my luck, I'll drip alcohol on it if I don't move it. So I wanted to show you the itsy bitsy little hole there. So if you don't have one of the little funnels with it, it is a real challenge to fill. And I think that this set, I know I've bought two sets of these and one of them I know came with a funnel. Uh, the other one I can't remember if it did or not. I need to go back and check to see which link I put on for that. All right, so I will get to the painting and be sure to let me know uh, if you all would like me to do a video where I you know put just put the gold leaf on although it's pretty self-explanatory but I'll be glad to, to do a quick video on that one day if anybody wants to see that and don't forget check out Katherine Babcock uh, artistic insanity on YouTube she has I think she's, she's new to videos, so she doesn't have a whole lot of videos yet, but I think she had four different types of ornaments to do, an alcohol ink, acrylic paint, glitter, um, a um, spray paint, like a mirror type spray paint, almost liquid mercury, the a looking ornament that she had done. I think there were four on those, and then... Um, I know there was at least one on planters, little like ceramic planters 
uh, that the girls want to do that. Although I don't have any planters, but we do have some Dollar Tree vases. So I think that we're probably going to play around with the vases a little bit and see what comes up out of that. So anyway, check out Catherine's channel if you're interested in that. Even if you don't want to do ornaments this time of year, it's always, you know, cool to have these ideas to do on things other than ornaments. All right, well, I will. All right, I forgot to mention in the intro, I had done this painting on a 12 inch by 12 inch graphics opaque white craft plastic. There you can yeah, you can see where I had to go back and look to see which colors I had actually used in this. Uh, I can pretty well guess, but when I'm doing one that has colors blended a lot, sometimes it's hard to tell uh, what's what once it's on the, the painting, if it's blended in with another color. Uh, those of you who watched the one that I did with the red and orange, it's... Uh, I did this one the same way, just left a, a little bit more negative space in my white with this one. Started out with my two darkest colors um, with indigo and the purple twilight. And I think, I'm, I'm so sorry, y'all. I am really sorry. I should have zoomed up on this before I did the voiceover. Maybe I could have told what color I was using. But I'm pretty sure it was the indigo and then the purple twilight. Or it might have been indigo and eggplant. Um, anyway, I, I put down, you know, different spots of color of those because I did want those to blend a little bit down there at the bottom. And you can see I covered... Uh, quite a bit of that with ink before I ever went back and put alcohol on. I also used quite a bit of metallic in this. Tried to make sure that I had a, a drop of metallic for, for mostly every drop of ink that I had put on. And then once again on this one, I tried to work in larger sections than I normally do. If I'm doing a painting that's got a lot more negative space in it, then I won't work in such a big area most of the time. I'll try and work a little bit smaller, but in these I wanted my um, color sections, especially at the bottom, you know, I wanted them to be bigger chunks and not uh, a lot of teeny tiny little lines in there that were created by the the ink and the metallic kind of wanted some larger areas in there and you can see just kind of you know when i added the alcohol then i started blowing it up towards the top of the painting a little bit more to spread it out start getting it just a little bit Thinner, but I did not spread it very much because I did want to leave that dark color at the bottom. Wanted it to lighten up a little bit as I went up through there. I also, I forgot to show you all at the beginning of the video, um, I am still using the same uh, Revlon curling brush type hair dryer with the brush attachment removed. Those of you who've seen my videos before know that this is uh, my the tool, that air tool that I use all the time on these. I really, really like this. It takes a little getting used to. I do use it on the cool setting. And on this, with this dryer, the cool setting is also a high air setting, which when I first got it, I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but now I love it. And the rare occasions when I switch it over to a heat setting, I have trouble using it on the low heat setting where it's got a lower airflow. I've just gotten so used to the higher airflow that uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to do what make it do what I want it to do if I switch it to the low airflow. So I had gone back and darkened that up right there. I just decided it was a little bit too light. Wanted to add a little bit more 
darkness at the very bottom. I had kind of spread that one a little more than I had intended to. So, oh, I'll, with the um, with the dryer, there is a link below in the drop-down description box to what I use. If you want to see, it's an Amazon link to it, but it does certainly, if you're looking to buy one, does not have to be this one. Uh, any particular one like this would work. I, I just love the shape of this one. It's so much easier to hold. And I've mentioned before, you know, I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands, and this one does not hurt my hands the way that trying to hold a regular hair or hair dryer with a handle did. When I, the first, I don't know, two weeks maybe that I tried to paint like this, I was using a regular hair dryer, and you know, figured out real quickly that just was not going to work well for me at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see, I had added some stream there at that point. I, you know, was trying to, to work my way up with the darker colors, but I wanted to break up the pink and the purple a little bit, which is the reason I chose to go ahead and use these kind of aqua-ish, <laughs> turquoise-ish <laughs> colors, uh, kind of in between the purples and the wild plum wanted to, I didn't want it to all be just pink and purple. And I did kind of want that broken up just a little because I didn't want to use a whole lot of the greens in this one, just enough to, to kind of shade it in to the other colors or blues. I don't know what to call them, greens, blues, bluish greens. There we go, <laughs> found it. And, you know, I continue to put the uh, the brass down as well. Put down the ink, put down the brass, put down the alcohol, and spread it out. I did not wisp this out at this point. Uh, the, I mean, I spread it some to work my way up towards the top of the page a little bit more. But I did not try to make it thin and wispy this far back at all. I waited until I was had my last row of color on that I wanted to use before I went back and started trying to kind of uh, soften up the edges a little bit. As you can see, I am making another big mess off the side of the paper, but my darling husband got me a uh, Lazy Susan for Christmas, along with some other things. He's just such a sweet man. Got me a like a vlogging set, even though this is the only thing that I do. I don't really vlog, I guess. Um, got me a nice tripod set up to hold my phone, because that's what I use to record my videos on. Got a light on it and a microphone and everything. So... It, uh, hopefully I can get all my sort of studio stuff set up before long to where I can start using that. While I'm thinking about it, I had did want to say thank you to you all. My channel has just grown by leaps and bounds over the last, well, let's see, when did I start it? April? May? Might have been May. I can't remember. It was either April or May of 2019 this year, and I'm just, uh, I'm blown away by the amount of support that I get from you all that are subscribing and leaving the wonderful comments for me that when I'm getting in kind of a, a funk about whether or not to keep doing this because it is very time consuming and sometimes I'm just not sure, you know, do, do people even really care about watching these <laughs> or, you know, but, you know, then I see my subscriber count going up and I see 
these just amazing comments that you all leave that just make me feel so good about my art and my videos. And I hope I don't drive y'all too crazy with my rambling on and my <laughs> my voiceovers that I do. But I but thank you all. I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You all are all just wonderful. And it, it really does mean the world to me to to see the, the lovely compliments and wonderful things that you all have to say. So I think right there I had gone back, yeah, I had added the purple twilight by itself right there because I did want to start getting that uh, lightened up to a little bit of a different shade as it came up the sides, but I didn't want to use any more of the um, dream or patina right there because I did want to keep mostly the pinks and purples just with highlights of, of the other, the blue-green shades. There you can see I'm just trying to blend it a little bit. Wanted to make sure I didn't have too much of a, a delineation between the colors. I wanted to make sure that, that they were blended together on the sides. When you're doing that, just, you know, you, you want to use less alcohol. Because if you use a whole lot of alcohol or blending solution right there, you're going to end up having to move it around too much to get it to dry good and you're going to end up mixing your colors together completely rather than just the edges of them where you just kind of want to have that a, a soft sort of ombre look shading them together yeah i had to dry the back of my paper it was sticking to my little I've got a, a piece of um, photo paper that I use to paint on sometimes. I, I've got a piece of it taped down to my table that I work on to kind of sop up some of the ink as it goes off. And I should have thought to flip it over onto the shiny side, the front, the glossy side, because the ink would absorb into that much, much quicker. I... I guess out of habit, I laid it down with the back side facing up, which means the thing just blows around all over it for a while until everything dries good. But it does help keep it from spreading quite so much onto the little vinyl tablecloth I have my table covered with. Although even that, I have that flipped upside down. <laughs> the the fuzzy side is up, so it would absorb anything that blows off of my uh, workspace I have. So as you're, you know, as you're going along, if you're trying this, just kind of keep in mind what kind of shape you want, uh, where you want your negative space to be, how much negative space you want there to be and uh, you know just sort of build your colors up accordingly to how far you want to go up with the colors before you you know decide to stop and just you know if you want to do one that's similar to what I do um, make sure that you leave enough space to kind of soften your edges up now some people like that harder edge i just like mine softened up a little bit so uh, just be sure that that you do leave yourself some space to do your kind of wispiness and softness at the edges there since you're going to want to blow that up into your negative space to get that that wispy look uh, 
just yeah make sure you don't completely close up your negative space unless that's the look that you're going for these right here I think this is probably some of my favorite color combinations to work with I love the sort of turquoise colors the blue green colors uh, and purple and the dark pinks and things together they're just I just love doing those colors together there's some of my favorite colors anyway with the you could tell if you could see my closet I, I think probably two-thirds of my clothes are some shade of purple or a sort of plum or darker pink or a sort of turquoise type colors um, especially the ones that are the color of this like the ranger stream ink i just i love that this is beautiful of course i love aqua too and for those of you who are new uh, to my channel thank you for checking out my paintings i hope that uh, that you enjoy this and I'll apologize now for my tendency to ramble on about random things that have nothing to do with the video that you're actually watching. So, but there is a nice little mute button if you don't want to hear me jabber on about everything under the sun. Just feel free to mute it. Um, I do, I promise, I do get some tips in there on occasion. Uh, but I do, I do kind of have a tendency to, to ramble on and talk about things that really have nothing to do with the actual painting that I'm working on so but welcome I appreciate you watching um, if you do like what you see or what you hear um, you know consider subscribing to my channel and if you want to get notified when I post a new video click that little bell that shows up when you click subscribe and that uh, lets YouTube know to notify you whenever I do post a new video uh, to all of my already current subscribers especially those of you all who've been here with me since the very beginning thank you all for sticking with me I, I hope that you feel like you have learned something from my videos and that your own uh, art process you know has been helped by some of the things that you've seen on my videos I really appreciate you all so you all right you can see where I started adding in some of that wild plum color because I did want to leave um, a fairly decent amount of negative space in this one um, although I did as you can see, I wanted to come all the way up on one side, but I didn't want it to come out into the middle of the painting much. Just wanted it uh, sloped up to that top corner and uh, kind of softened out there. Uh, on the other side, you know, I decided I, I didn't want to come all the way up. I didn't want the kind of U shape that I ended up with on my red and orange one that I did I I had really wished that excuse me I forgot the hiccups that I had left a little more um, negative space in that one I felt like it was kind of too u-shaped now the colors I was just crazy about I'm I'm not normally a big fan of reds and orange now I mean I I like reds and orange and yellows and things but they're not my favorite colors and they're not colors that I tend to paint with a lot but that painting was absolutely one of my favorites that I have ever done I think that's that's what got me wanting to try and do another one in colors that uh, I really like some of my favorite go-to colors anyway although that painting was just about enough to make me want to redecorate my living room in red and gold now, sometimes you all see me 
really not moving the dryer very much. And <coughs> that is generally, I'm <coughs> sorry, I gotta get <coughs> a drink here. Maybe I get rid of these hiccups. Um, that's generally when I'm trying to make sure that I have a spot good and dry. I don't want to leave any little wet place in there so that when I go back and add more alcohol and start working, I may move that ink without meaning to. So that's what that's what you're seeing a lot of times. And sometimes it's not so much in one like this, but in some of the other paintings that I do, it's because I'm sort of chasing a little line of ink. I want to push the little droplet of ink that's still wet and create a line out of it. If I'm working from both sides towards the center and I want that center line in there, then that's, I'll just, you know, I try and chase that little drop of ink down through there because it helps me mark my line and it will help stop the ink as I blow it in from the sides as long as I don't have too much alcohol on it in which case it just erases it and runs it over. So just going back here and doing a little bit of blending I've just I felt like I didn't get it quite soft enough, the or blended enough, the delineation there was still a little sharper than I wanted between the colors. And you can see I, in some places I hadn't even started blending the colors in very well yet. So hopefully soon um, I will have a Facebook page up. I am trying to work on it. I may just have to go ahead and, <laughs> and make it public um, without getting a chance to work on it very much. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get a, a, a Facebook page up. And I've also been working on a website which y'all I know nothing about setting up websites and things like that so um, just been trying to set up a website where I can sell some of these and the uh, my Facebook page will have a link to that but it will also have links to um, these videos that are on YouTube when I post a video on YouTube I'm going to try and keep it posted on Facebook as well. And uh, some of some pictures of paintings that I do that I don't uh, have videos of. So hopefully soon, I hope by my next video, I will have um, at least something, at least a Facebook page going. I just... Phew, I need about 48 hours in a day right now so I can get done everything I feel like I need to. I really thought with the girls on their sort of Christmas break, which for those of you who are new and haven't heard, I, I do homeschool our two granddaughters that we're raising. And so I was thinking, all right, we're going to be out of school for a couple of weeks. I can get all kinds of paintings done and videos done and no. No, <laughs> that did not happen. It has not even close to happened. It's, uh, uh, I think that I have more time when we're having school than when we're not. So, I, I really apologize. I, you know, my goal is to get at least one video a week up, and I have just sadly failed at that. I have failed really badly at that. I think it's been close to three weeks 
anyways, I know it's been at least two since my last video uh, got posted, and so I'm really sorry. Really sorry, y'all, the ones of you that are, are waiting for something new to, to come up. I just have barely had time to paint during these Christmas holidays, and I have been, some of that time has gone towards trying to work on getting some decent photographs of some paintings so that I can list them on my new website and list them on Facebook and things but uh, a lot of it's just been spent with family time trying to spend some time with the girls that didn't involve school getting the helping them out with some of their new Christmas things uh, letting them use up my art supplies <laughs> doing their the arts and crafts that they want to try to do it just seems like there's always something going on trying to do some family movie nights while my husband was off as well the entire week of Christmas so uh, we're always when he doesn't have to you know, get up at 4 30 in the morning for work the next morning we try to to do a family movie night every now and then as as much as I love painting especially with these alcohol inks I uh, just don't always have the time that I would like to to put into them that was one of those spots where you'll see me I'm just using that's actually just an old makeup brush that I had in a makeup bag and I never used it. It's like a, a, an eyeshadow brush, not the little foam thing, but an actual brush. Uh, I, I never used it, so I stuck it in my painting supplies one day when I needed a small brush for something and couldn't find one. But the metallic had come out a little farther than I wanted it to, like a, a heavy line of it had come out and I was having trouble getting it to go away. It, it left too much of a line when I was trying to soften it up. I didn't want to have that just straight line pointing back in there. You may see me do that a few more times in this video. I have done it in some others as well. But just I will drop a couple of drops of alcohol on the brush and then kind of scrub that spot up a little bit and then go back over it again with alcohol on the paper. I'm sorry, these, uh, this video and the one before with the red and orange uh, seem like they've been quite a bit longer than a lot of my videos have been and I, I really apologize for that this uh, you would think that this right here would be easier than doing the entire painting in that soft wispy look but it's not for me and uh, it, it may just be because it's a fairly new style for me this is just the second time that I have tried to do one like this with this much non wispy part in it <coughs> and so uh, so maybe that's why it seems like it's a lot slower and and I do there actually have been videos y'all that I've deleted because it's ended up taking me you know two or three hours to get a painting where I'm happy with it and a lot of times it's a case of coming back the next day and working on it again uh, or sometimes just completely wiping down my paper that whatever I happen to be working on it's don't uh, don't ever feel bad about doing that because I don't care how long you've been an artist. 
you're gonna do things you don't like. You're gonna look at stuff and go, bleh, that looks awful. I, I don't care who you are or how good of an artist you are. I guarantee you Michelangelo was not happy with some of his work. It's, I think that we're always our own worst critics, and I'm pretty sure I've said that before, but it's also, I mean, you, a lot of times you know what you want it to look like, and you know when you look at it, even if you don't understand about composition and balancing a painting out, you know when you look at it that it just doesn't look right, that there's, that things are off and it really needs to be fixed because it will just bother you if you don't fix it. Unfortunately for me, a lot of times when I go back to fix it, I just mess it up and then it takes me even longer to try to fix what I've messed up and you know, etc, etc. So, but don't, um, don't ever feel like you're never going to get it because you will and you just, just keep at it. I mean, we all have bad painting days and sometimes a bad painting week or month. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. It's none of them are going to turn out perfect. And I had said from the beginning when I first started doing these videos that I wanted to show you all kind of the good and the bad which is why you'll see some not very good videos on here. So, or not very good paintings on the video. Ones that I just was really not happy with. And ones that I really struggled with to get anything done on it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I did get time to paint last night. And I will probably... When I get time to do the voiceover for that one, I did video it. And it's one of those for me was just, I'm still not happy with it. Uh, I worked on it last night for a while, went back to it this morning and worked on it a little bit more. And I just think it looks sort of like a squashed cat. <laughs> once once I see these shapes, I can't unsee them. <laughs> and so I just, I'm not really happy with it. But, you know, I did, I do want you all to see that um, even, I don't care how beautiful somebody's work is, uh, it, it's not always that way. It's really not. I mean, I get some great comments from you all uh, about just how beautiful you think that my work is, but it's, I mean, if you look back at the thumbnail for some of my videos, it's, they're cringeworthy. They really are. And, and I still do ones that are. So, but the great thing is, if you are working on something like the NARA paper, the N-A-R-A, or graphics, the opaque white craft plastic, or something like that, uh, it will completely wipe clean. If you do one that you just can't fix, and the more you mess with it, the worse it gets, just clean it off and start over. I actually have had to do that, although this is really funny. I'll, I'll have to show you all this painting one day. I did that on one a few weeks ago that I just, it was just a hot mess. And I had ended up with way too much ink on it from trying to fix it. So I decided to just wipe it off and start over and wiped most of it off and you know put some more alcohol on it and was using my hair dryer to keep blowing everything sort of towards the center to make it a little easier to get it wiped off. And um, ended up creating a painting out of the leftover ink that was on the, it was one of those, the Nara, rounds and actually ended up really really liking it it's a very soft painting it looks sort of like a flower on there now and I was uh, pleasantly surprised by that luckily my grand one of my granddaughters was in the room with me when I was trying to clean all that off 
or she had come in the room, and she's like, ooh, don't put any more on it. I want that. It looks so pretty. It's like a flower. I was like, oh, it certainly does. So even when you're trying to completely wipe one off, you never know what you can come up with. And this one, I, I love the colors on this. It's so jewel-toned, and that I just absolutely love. So I was running my mouth again. I'm sorry, but... There's, uh, you can see where I had started softening up all those edges and, uh, you know, and in here adding a little bit more of the, the blue-green tones. I felt like there was just a little too much um, spot, spot, spot of the blue, the bluish colors anyway. I wanted to try and, and get just a touch more in there uh, and mix it a little this is what I'm doing right here, kind of mixing it in a little bit because that gives you a whole new color when you shade those together. So uh, that's that's what I was trying to work on. And I think, yeah, this spot right here is one that I had some struggles with. I just blew too much of my ink back into the painting and I didn't keep enough of it out toward the edge and so I ended up having to go back and try to fix that and then some of my alcohol got away from me and blew over into an area that I you know hadn't wanted to move hadn't wanted to work on and ended up having to try to fix that as well And you all can see how that uh, the the brass or any metallic that you're using will it, it gets very difficult to move once it has sat there it gets a lot more difficult to move so which is the reason that I used that brush on the other part of it to, to loosen that up and sometimes you don't need to do that you know just sort of washing the alcohol back and forth over it will do it there I was just trying to get off I had gotten the ink pushed back and it left a little just extremely fine line of the pinata brass around the outside where the ink had been and I didn't want that there but with this with pinata brass um at least on this graphics the craft plastic I just took my finger and, and rubbed that off as long as there's no ink for it to cling to it will rub off of your surface fairly easily uh, as long as it's not on there thick um, until the painting gets sealed anyhow Let me say again real quickly that uh, if you're interested in seeing some of the sort of dabbing, daubing <laughs> technique uh, to do some uh, glass ornaments or planters or what I'm going to try it or let my granddaughters try it on the vases, uh, check out Catherine Babcock's channel. Uh, Catherine Babcock slash, not slash, but dash, uh, Artistic Insanity. And I think I'd said at the beginning, I'll, I'll put the link to her channel in my description box if you all want to check that out. She does a great job of explaining and is very personable and friendly seeming on her videos. And I, I enjoyed listening to your videos, Catherine, if you happen to be watching this one.
I know sometimes that you all have to look at what I'm doing and wonder why on earth I was doing that because it looked good to start with. And sometimes I wonder the same thing. When I go back and watch these videos, I start thinking, now why on earth did I do that? Because they're, you know, I won't see anything wrong with it. But apparently I saw something at the time that was uh, bothering me or I just wasn't happy with and wanted to try to, to fix. You can see I'm looking for more of those little lines of the gold that, or the brass that I don't want to leave there. I didn't want just little looping lines of gold coming out from where the wispy area was with no color around it. As I got up toward the top up here where, um, you know, I really wanted it to be a little bit thinner, I tried to make the, the soft area a little bit smaller. Didn't come out as far with it because I didn't want to sort of have it looming over the rest down below. I, was, I pushed back some of that ink before I softened up the edge, you can see as I did there, uh, to try to, to keep that from sticking out there quite so far. I had ended up getting a little too much ink there, got it a little bit too heavy, and wanted to, to thin that out just a touch so that it wasn't a wide band coming up through there. And, you know, as you can see, I put my alcohol down right at the very edge and yeah I couldn't get that edge softened up enough so I couldn't get it to to move good so I had to use that brush to push that back a little um, but I try to keep my alcohol right at the either at the outside edge of where the ink starts or just right on that line of where the ink is it kind of depends on how thick the ink is and what and what how you know how heavy I've applied it and how much of a of a wispy part I want to do whether I put it directly on the the edge of the ink or leave it off the edge I'd still I my favorite thing to do is to have it off the edge of the ink and then blow it back towards it to pick up a little bit of ink because you don't want if you're going for a, a soft wispy edge you don't want to have a lot of your ink blow out if you can help it because then you have to blow it all back again and if you're not using a large amount of ink at one time that can get a little bit aggravating and tricky and it also if you use a lot of ink, then you're going to end up having to blow it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's just going to get, it's going to overwork your ink if you do that. So I like to put it on that outer edge so that I can pick up just a little bit. And, uh, you know, just pull that little bit out and then, you know, blow it back in towards the center part.
<laughs> that was that was one of those times when I was trying to figure out why I messed with that. But I think I just I wanted it to come to a sharper point up there in that top corner. It was still just a little bit too um, kind of wide for me right there. I kind of wanted it to to fade into nothing as it hit the corner. I could just about take a take some alcohol and make a whole new painting out of my uh my under paper there that I'm painting on or that the painting is on. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. One of my granddaughters just ran across the floor upstairs. Sounded like a horse running across the room up there. Unfortunately, for quite a bit more, a few more minutes, I, you know, looked and pondered and, you know, was trying to decide what to do. Was it good enough? Did I want to leave it? And I, I had some spots of the gold that I couldn't rub off with my finger. And I also had just a couple of little dots where a little bit of ink had dripped that I was trying to get off there. That is just a Q-tip, regular Q-tip with a little bit of alcohol dripped on it. If you do this, be really careful. First of all, you don't want to get anywhere near your ink that you want to keep, but be really careful not to get too much alcohol on your Q-tip or it will run to it, but also to, uh, Turn your Q-tip so that you don't end up accidentally laying back down alcohol that you or, or the ink that you picked up from somewhere else. I I try to keep a really close eye on that because otherwise you will end up leaving streaks from alcohol or bleh, I'll get that out one of these days from ink that you picked up as you were cleaning up the painting a little bit. And I'm sorry that this part goes on for so long with me just looking at it and turning it and trying to decide if I want to do anything else to it, making sure I've got everything. I, um, before I did this voiceover, I tried to clip some of this part out and I ended up having to just like scrap the whole video and start all over again because it was not working. I, I could not figure out how to do it. And I'm sorry, y'all, I'll practice on that to where I can cut out some of these parts like this <coughs> where I'm just trying to decide which direction I like the look of it better from and uh, trying to see if there's anything else that I wanted to do to it before I you know, called it done. And just so you know, I did call it done here. So if you don't want to watch the rest of this, you don't have to. Um, I just, I brought the camera down here so that y'all could see just how much of that shimmer uh, and the gold. And you can kind of see how it mixed with the ink in places and gave you that beautiful shimmery color of whatever color the ink was but it still left plenty of it on top of the ink to to just be gold looking or brass looking i guess so you can kind of see how it turns the the ink almost metallic color in there All right, whoops. I'll let it go to the end. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. And I will be back with y'all just as soon as I can. Have a great day. Bye.